Well, it's that time of week again. It's uh, time for another episode of Confused Room. Hello, everybody. Tony and Jenny Bruski joining you once again from a room that's not so confused. Because no, it's Jenny's this, office. This so. is one of the few that I have put together. Yeah. <laughs> one of the few you've put together? No, I mean one of the few that is currently put together. Oh, oh, I see what so you're saying. So many are in process right now. Some rooms kind of resemble lumber yards. A little bit. It's kind of fun. It's like, oh, look, we can build a, a, I don't know. Just wait. Crate or something. Just wait. I have big plans for our garage now. I haven't even told you. I've been thinking about that because we have a lot of tools that, and, and for Valentine's Day. Uh, My hubby. For I'm a Valentine's romantic Day. fool. Romantic fool. And I think any other wife would have hit you upside the head. <laughs> But he got me a planer. He knew I was wanting one. And um, for what? those of you who don't know what that is. I was going to say, why don't you explain what the planer is? It, it's kind of, I guess, maybe a little bit like a sander on steroids, except it just takes the top gritty layer off of boards. You run it through almost like, I don't know, what would you describe it as? You just kind of, you, you push it through almost like it's yeah. it's being, you know. It's like it's being inhaled by a a, 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 a <laughs> A sanding monster. Kind of. And, and it just takes like old reclaimed rough wood, anything that's just not as mm-hmm. smooth as it should be for working with, mm-hmm. and takes that top layer off mm-hmm. and makes it like it's new. But I have big plans for that specific tool for yeah. a specific project, plus a million other things that I know I can use. But I was not at all expecting a... Uh, a planer, and I'm very happy about that. Because ever since we went to your uncle's house, I've been kind of like, I think I need a planer. And uh, I texted him, sh- sh- I just texted him a picture of the box, mm-hmm. saying, I got this for Jenny's uh, Valentine's Day present. And it was Jeff's response. You romantic fool, you. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Uh, so it, I'm excited about that. Yeah. It, it's, it really is it's one of those tools where you go, I didn't even know this existed and worked like this. This is... I didn't. I didn't even know that that existed. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I consider I, I've gotten fairly literate in a lot of tools mm-hmm. in the last several years of doing these projects, but um, that was one I had not really had much hands-on experience with or witnessed. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, th- I could use this in, in several cases. You could use this in several right. cases. And like, maybe this is a... And a I good love investment. it because you can adjust how much or how little you take off. So yeah. you can take off just the top rough part and kind of leave some of the indention part. Mm-hmm. And one of the boards we ran through did that, and I loved how that looked. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm going to kind of do that. Yeah, and uh, if you have those boards that are kind of off a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, they can do some correcting with it. It's not going to make everything perfect, but it can get it a heck of a lot better than what you may be dealing with. It so. helps a lot. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about that. you got to get out of the box and try it. Yeah, I know. And, I uh, know. I made a mistake with a tool recently. I didn't get <laughs> it out of the box quick enough and try it and realized it was a dud. Yeah. Thankfully, we were able to return it in time. Yeah, they were good about that. Yeah. But yeah, I'm excited about it. So, uh, this week, our uh, creative juice is uh, from the Infinite Monkey Theorem. You like the, uh, like the bottle? I it's love cool. it. It's an urban winery. Uh, they have one in Denver and they have one in Austin. And we are entering now. Da, 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 da. We need like a real, I need to like make really cheesy graphics or something where it's just like 1980s, big and sure. bulky and silly. Yeah. Uh, Texas Wine Month is what it we're going to be going into uh, and exploring uh, some of the wines of your home state. That's right. And uh, these guys uh, sent uh, sent us a couple of bottles. Going to do their, uh, their temper Nilo. Uh, and I'm saying it correct? I think so. Okay. We, we, I mean, I, I've heard it many different ways. Mm-hmm. I've heard temper, temper Nero or tempo, temper, temper ne, ne, Neo. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we were before the show, you're like, I just want to make sure I'm saying it right. We need to look this up. I'm like, well, I think it's this. And the, the guide told us temper Nilo. Like Amarillo. Yeah. I'm horrible at enunciating uh, wine. Um, <laughs> I love drinking it, but I'm not good at saying it. So this is it uh, for. This week, it's their 2015. The Urban Winery, what they do is they get grapes that they don't grow. They get it from uh, good growers uh, in in different parts uh, of uh, of the country, either from Colorado uh, or uh, from Texas. And then they take that and then they do their stuff with them. Mm 
they age it in their different barrels or their casks or whatever they're doing to create really interesting wines. Um, and this is uh, that whole urban winery thing is kind of a fairly you know new thing, last maybe five, ten years, uh, kind of becoming a thing. Well, kind of, but, you know, there's been other vineyards that mm-hmm. – have had bad years and they borrow sure. grapes from other places yeah. and, and do essentially the same thing. Sure. But it's never been out kind of like advertised, you know, but yeah. this is a specific mm-hmm. way of doing that. It's what I'm saying is different is it's, it's like in kind of, you know, some arts districts mm-hmm. and it, it, it is their store. Their what that is their winery at the place. A lot of times where you used to see things like that, it was, um, well, this is like a, a store for the, the vineyard that's sure. way yonder, uh, and this is just kind of like their hub. Mm-hmm. But this is like that's their place, and they do it all there in the urban setting, and they create their wine. So, okay. uh, that's that. So here's your ginormous uh, glass, and we'll just pour the whole thing right in there no. and say enjoy. That's good, thank you. Lots of interesting projects uh, this week. Mm-hmm. You finished up your pantry project. And then we got a letter uh, about uh, a bathroom that needs some uh, some fixing up. Yes. Also, a bedroom and a basement space. Uh, we're all going to show you some uh, digital uh, redesigns on those. If you have a space that you want uh, some advice on, uh, you can send it to us through our Facebook page uh, at Confused Room or on the website. It is up. It is active. It is running. Awesome. You just go to confusedroom.com, <laughs> and there's a gazillion ways to click on the submit your uh, your picture thing. Uh, so you do that one click. Tell me a little bit about what you like, and then you may well we may use it on a future episode of the program. Tasty. I like it. I like it a lot. Ooh, that's bold. I like mm-hmm. that. It's very good. That is very good. So let's jump into uh, our pantry project first, okay. shall we? Let's show the before, the ugly, ugly before. The ugly, ugly before. Okay, this is the ugly, ugly before of the pantry. Okay? And I had made some attempt to start to organize it. Uh-huh. But you it, did. It wasn't going to be good enough. Not not for me, not knowing what we know mm-hmm. how to do now. No. You are not a big fan of the wire shelving. Uh, things would fall through the wire shelving. Yeah, and the wire shelving started to kind of give, and I just mm-hmm. didn't, I never felt real confident in how much it could hold. Yeah. <laughs> so I just was ready to get rid of it. And there is, I kid you not, the, the pantry has the same ceiling height as the kitchen, so mm-hmm. it has nine-foot ceilings, and there's four shelves in this pantry. Yeah. And and there's like six feet of room above each the, shelf. You know, yeah. it's like this is dumb. You would this need like really the super large box of frosted flakes from the the industrial club uh, store to get a good use out of that. Uh, yeah. that that much space. Yeah, it it was poorly laid out. Yeah. So uh, you played around a little bit. I'm sure. I know you already had a lot of it in your head of what you wanted to do, but you played around mm-hmm. in the design. And now I. That's the beauty of the software. Mm-hmm. I can't just describe to you. I can tell you mm-hmm. what it is. So this is uh, what her initial uh, design was on the software, uh, as far as what she was envisioning for the actual pantry. Should we show the finished product? Yes. A little video run through, and then you can talk about exactly what you did with it all. So this is our before. If you're watching it on our website at confusedroom.com, it's it's the wire shelving. It's a lot of stuff. And then this, it's the after pictures. And uh, why don't you explain what uh, what you did here from the ground up? Okay, well, the pantry size, the footprint of this room is four foot by five foot. And it had a door that opened inwards. And I just thought, you know, getting around the door, trying to navigate the shelving, I thought, we're taking the door off. And when I redo the hallway that is adjacent to this pantry, I'm going to put a sliding door on it. But got the door out of the way. And it's amazing how much more room it felt like was in there but that was the first step and then getting everything out and taking all the wire shelving down Mm -hmm. and then once we did that i went and painted all the walls um a green it's called um coastal plain by sherwin williams and i really liked it because it's kind of a soft blue green that's kind of vintagey looking and started out with um (laughs) <laughs> it started out with uh, getting all the painting done and then figuring out where the countertop was going to go. 
Uh, one of the biggest steps when you're doing a pantry redo is planning out what you want your pantry to do besides just hold your food. It's like you need to consider what else do you need to stick into your pantry. In our case, we had our paper towel supply and we needed to relocate where our microwave was from the kitchen because that's coming down. And um, so we decided to relocate it to the pantry. And we also had some larger uh, cooking appliances that needed storage too. So planning out what's going to go where is so important because if you just start putting shelves up, you're going to find some shelves are just way too big. Some are not big enough. You need to kind of make custom spots for these things. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things is what we're seeing on screen right now. It's this little shelf uh, for spices that you created, and you cut just a big hole into the wall to create the uh, that that shelf space. I built a spice rack between the studs. Mm -hmm. I, I checked it out, made sure there wasn't any electrical between two of the studs, and then framed it out with um, plywood and then trimmed it out to make it look like it had a craftsman kind of farmhouse looking trim and, mm -hmm. and just added some shelves. And I asked you how, you know, you wanted your shelf space because, again, planning is, is big as far as making sure you have shelves that are tall enough and mm -hmm. shelves that are short enough. Um, I didn't want to necessarily put drawers into the pantry. So when I built the cabinet unit, on bottom I wanted to leave it open but I used wooden crates which we painted red um, to serve as our drawers so they slide out and in and they hold things like chips mm -hmm. and you know uh, extra boxes of plastic bags or whatever you sure know, things like that and um, kids lunch boxes go in there and I did do all the tile work we did a double backsplash part of the reason we did that is from the countertop up is a foot and then there's a shelf, and it's a, I call it a mini shelf. It's only six inches deep, and it goes the perimeter over the countertop. And that allows you to have that working space on the counter mm -hmm. in front of it without that shelf kind of, you know, coming right at you and being right where, you know, you, you need to be able to see sure. what you're doing. And then from that mini shelf up another foot, we did, uh, again, the same subway tile backsplash. Mm -hmm. And it works out well. I can make peanut butter and jellies and microwave them. At the same time, hot PB&J. You ever have a hot PB&J? No. It's delicious. I um, have been making the girls' lunches in there, mm -hmm. and it's very, very convenient to have everything mm -hmm. right there. But um, And we also tiled the floor. We had the vinyl uh, planks down on the floor before, but I was thinking long-term I wanted tile on the floor. And mm -hmm. I did a mosaic, uh, just two-by-two two white tile, around the edge and then kind of did what they're calling a tile rug or I guess an inlay of pattern tile in the main spot where you're going to stand. Mm -hmm. But under the cabinets and everything, I just went ahead and did mosaic because I thought there's no point in putting, you know, the, the nicer tile sure. under the cabinets. And I, I kind of liked the design of it just looking like a rug. Charlene says, loves that tile. Where did you find it like that? I found the pattern tile at Lowe's and uh, the mosaics actually found at Lowe's. And you can find those two by two mosaics anywhere. I know Home Depot has a pattern tile they stock right now, but it's gray and white. I hand painted it myself. You did not. That's how it worked out. No. Uh, it does look really cool. I like the, uh, the tile rug, yeah. quote unquote, idea uh, for the room. Uh, it turned out really well. I'm really happy with it. I really, and, and like I, I said, you know, the hot PB&J, another great thing you can do in a room like this uh, is because you, you have your microwave right there uh, is, is play one of my favorite games. Can you microwave it? And there's just so many options on that shelf. There's Oreos, there's spaghetti, there's oatmeal. Last time you played that game, you put an egg <laughs> in our microwave. The answer to that is not really. This is not... A cracked egg to make scrambled eggs quickly. This is a mm -hmm. unbroken egg, and it exploded, and it got egg everywhere, and it was a lot of fun. It kind of sounded like a bomb. Yeah, going it really off did. when it did, because I mean, it it really it exploded, and uh, it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought maybe you could kind of hard boil it in a, a jiffy, but jiffy. There's. Can you microwave jiffy? I don't know. It's a question. Don't microwave honey. That's 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 a good one to, okay. to learn. But you, I mean, you can if you have like a jar of honey and it's like really really hard to get out or you're really impatient. If you uh, if you microwave it, it'll make it soft, but it will then crystallize. 
okay. uh, right after, and then you'll really not be able to get it out. And you'll have to microwave it every single time. So it's never really a good idea to microwave honey. I've learned that one. Honey and eggs don't microwave well. Scrambled eggs microwave well. Do you think we have enough shelves? I put eight shelves in, and, and I built all these shelves. I used uh, plywood and mm-hmm. then trimmed them out. So they are sturdy, and I think they're going to last for a very long time. I think they're going to, yeah, I think we have more than enough shelves going in there. It's like, oh, yeah, everything <laughs> has a place now. There's nothing that's like buried behind other things, no. which I like. Having uh, a shorter uh, or, or a less wide shelf forces you to not be able to bury things behind other things. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you kind of have to be a little more picky on your placement. Because the upper shelves are only 12 inches deep mm-hmm. past that six inch mini shelf. Yeah. But the lower cabinets, they're 16 and 18, depending on yeah. which side of the pantry. But I'm I'm happy with it. And we'll live with it for a while and see if there's any adjustments. And I'll let y'all know if we've changed anything. But I think we're good. Next week, it's going to be a sauna. No. It's going to be the pantry sauna where you go in there and you heat up. And you can, there'll still be snacks in it though. A a snack sauna. Did you get any pictures of the crown molding we did in there? I did not. I put crown up. You did. Just to cover because the uh, paint job did not go so well trying to Mm -hmm. get up close to the ceiling. So I thought, well, we'll just cover this up with some crown because for whatever reason the texture on the ceiling mm-hmm. just kept sucking that paint right out yeah it's weird i have to say it was quite a challenge getting any pictures in that small of a space yeah. and, and representing it in, in any way shape or form well, i'm just proud i got what i got because it's, i just thought maybe pointing the camera up sure that, we could do that yeah I, I can show that on the next episode of the crown molding job i'm happy with if it. You'd like. I'm proud of I it. think it turned out well. There was one point where we couldn't reach a corner. <laughs> and yeah. then with the, the small step ladder we had, then we had to get the giant ladder in there, which kind of doesn't technically fit in that room. No. And then climbing a ladder that wasn't quite secured with a nail gun. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. It worked. It worked. It got it in there. Mm-hmm. But I really, I, uh, I think it turned out well. I'm happy with the whole I thing. I too. So that is the uh, that is the pantry project. Uh, next on the list, we have a uh, a bathroom that uh, that needed some help, and you know what? I'm not sure. I I'm not sure I have a before of that. Let me get that. We'll go to the bathroom in just a few minutes, uh, and I can grab a before of it. But before we do that, let's move over here to uh let's do the basement space this is the before okay. of the basement that uh, that we got in and uh and your thoughts please on on the basement space my thoughts your thoughts on on what it is right now and and just you know it looks like um it looks like a, a room that's probably not frequented very mm-hmm. often and I'm venturing to guess it's probably in the basement of maybe like a grandparent's home because mm-hmm. of the the way that none of the walls are painted anything but white. And it just doesn't look like the basement is used. It's kind of neglected. There's a TV down there, but that doesn't really mean that they watch TV down there. Sure. Yeah, it's just it's just kind of there. It's it's like it's throwaway furniture. It's it's kind of just this was our couch a couple years ago, and now we're just going to kind of put it here, and this is what we're going to deal with. Right. It's kind of how uh, it it seems to feel to me. Um, so what they what we ended up doing here with it is we have two different takes on it. We both got a chance to do this room. Yeah. This week, um, you want to go first? You want me to show mine first? Um. Well. I don't care. What do you think? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. I'll go first. Okay, so Jenny's uh, take on the basement from this, what you see on your screen, to this. And I wanted to make it a fun family space, so I decided to add some bold colors. And by that, I I left some of the walls white, but I added a large stripe of orange on two mm-hmm. of the walls on the long wall that you see when you walk in and then the wall that then goes behind the projector screen and bookshelves and accented with orange here and there. The floor, we got rid of the carpet and I stained the concrete kind of a turquoise blue mm-hmm. and sealed it. And, uh, or at least that I didn't do it, but that's what you put, is my there a, plan is. Is there a sealant 
thing you can put on your virtual concrete on the program? No, but That's my, not, I'm wondering. I'm just saying that okay. if you do this, sure. you're going to want to seal it sure. after you stain it. So that was the thought was to stain it and seal it. And then um, I arranged the furniture to kind of focus on there's a projector screen and I have a sectional that kind of, you know, sits in front of it and then wraps around on that long wall. Mm -hmm. But behind it, I added a really tall, uh, almost bar table that goes behind the whole length of the sofa with three bar stools. So if somebody's wanting to, you know, sit with a plate of food or something and watch, they kind of can, you know, almost have a theater seating kind of set up there. Put a popcorn machine in there for fun uh, and a billiards table in the back behind everything because it's a very long, narrow room with a uh, fun, modern, aged brass looking uh, light fixture and just more bold colors. I did with the concrete floors put area rugs in here and they're green shag to kind of accent the, the blue and the orange. Mm -hmm. I like the, the blue uh, floor. Thank you. That's a neat idea with the concrete. I love stained concrete. And that's one of those things. There's all different variations in how you can do stained concrete. So before you, you jump into it, make sure you go and get some comparisons. Don't just think, oh, I saw stained concrete at this place. That must be how it all is because it's not. Well, worst case scenario, you can get concrete paint mm -hmm. that's for a concrete floor. Sure. And you could have it tinted like this. Yeah. So if you couldn't stain it, you mm -hmm. could still get that color on the floor. And different types of concrete take different types of stains very differently. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very fine concrete that, that it almost gets reflective yeah. off of. Um, you're just, you're kind of run of the mill foundation concrete that's not going to have really that uh, that aspect to it but i could actually see that kind of concrete working with what you just did with, yeah. with the blue my thought was the roughed up concrete like you know how some of the grocery stores are doing now where they yeah. pulled up the vct tile and there's mm -hmm. still dried glue and stuff sure but they've sanded it and they've just sealed it my thought was the imperfect was perfect for this room mm -hmm. i like that I like that a lot. So that's uh, that's Jenny's take on the basement. Here's uh, what I did with my take on the basement space. And uh, we'll start out with this rendering of it. It's kind of the, 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 the sketch version. I did the same sort of movie thing. Yeah. Uh, I did a movie screen. Really not much with it. Just kind of focusing directly to the movie screen. Some movie chairs. And again, I did the bar thing right behind it, too. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of... I don't know if we... I don't think you saw my no. draw. No, because... We start with yeah. the same parameters, and mm -hmm. then we go from there, and we don't look at each other yeah. until the show. It just kind of made sense. So the uh, the bar stool or, and the uh, the the bar uh, sitting area, which is literally right behind the movie seats, is actually uh, two wine barrels with a big uh, plank on top of it. Okay. Very easy to kind of put together mm -hmm. with some odds and ends, stain a board, put it on. There you go. Uh, get some bar stools, and then you have a nice kind of extra seating for when everybody's watching a movie. If somebody's maybe kind of in the other part of the room doing something. In the other part of the room, I put a game table, um, just like a card table, mm -hmm. uh, and kind of some fun domino type style chairs. And then I put in uh, essentially a faux fireplace where you do the electric insert, and I did a rock uh, surround on it. Sure. That you could uh, easily kind of put together. Got some movie posters up in front. Some kind of fun, different types of lighting. It's almost kind of a mixture of, you know, retro modern, if you will, mm -hmm. with some of the, the, the hanging uh, light balls that are uh, over by uh, the bar area. And then in the very back, I put in basically a little uh, wine uh, bar, if you will, uh, thing that... Uh, that uh, wine bar uh, has a wine fridge with it and then some prep area. If you're going to have snacks, going to have a party, going to have people over, you can uh, easily see exactly what you're doing. But it's not a walk behind bar, is it? No, it's just uh, an into the wall uh, piece. Okay. And a rock wall right behind it. So lots of fun accent pieces on some of the walls up towards the movie area. I kept the walls fairly plain just to kind of keep the focus up at the screen itself, other than just a couple of movie posters that were there sure. on this side. But that's uh, my take on the uh, the movie room. And I'm trying to pull up just the movie room in full without having <laughs> like three things on the screen at one time. And I'm not having any luck. Let's try. Come on. There's that graphic. 
Now there's this. There we go. Now we can see it in full screen glory. Um, so yeah, some uh, I love these lanterns, the old kind of storm yeah. uh, lanterns. Those are also some accents that are on the uh, the bar piece. So that would be how I would would lay it out, uh, and kind of very dark, warm colors. But I think when you have the extra, you know, the accent lights in there, it all kind of warms it up a bit. It does, yeah. So very, it's kind of similar to yours in layout. In layout, it is. Mm-hmm. It's just you've gone more the grown up version, where mine is more let's throw the teens down the sure. stairs to hang out while we're drinking upstairs. It's almost like the version you have is what you have when the kids are teens, and then the uh-huh. kids go, then mom and dad turn the basement into this. I think it kind of is. It's the transitional mm-hmm. uh, space, if you will. Okay, well, let's move on here to our next uh, uh, space. And this is a bathroom, and I have it on my phone. This is the the bathroom space that was sent into us from one of our listeners through Facebook. And it's uh, kind of what, how would you describe the color? Is it maroon-ish? I I think it's kind of like a dark rust color. Okay. And she said that this was already the wall, wall color that was up when they moved in. And she's just kind of not sure what to do. But it's she knows that this is overload. Mm-hmm. That they wanted to weigh... Tone it back. And this is the bathroom that when anybody comes over to her house, they're going to see this one. Sure. And I'm, you know, willing to bet that it's probably used by some of the, you know, the little ones that she said they have. And so she wanted something more friendly for everybody and not less, uh, not so much cave-like. Mm-hmm. And, and I can see that. And one of the couple of requests she had, she has some shells in there in a vase mm-hmm. that uh, kind of celebrating their travels and things that they do. It sounds like that's a big part of their life. Um, and then another thing that she wanted to mention was chalkboard. Uh, she mentioned that or possibly a gallery wall. Mm-hmm. So uh, let me show uh, what I did here with my design on it. Uh, and basically I made it a, kind of a black and white feel. Okay. to the bathroom um, with the pops of color. And you'll see this in the other rendering really kind of coming from the gallery. There's a, just kind of a hodgepodge of uh, picture frames above the toilet area. Wayne's coating. That's something you did on yours and I copied in mine. Um, and then uh, a fun uh, uh chalkboard piece uh, that anyone can uh, make their comments on when they're in the bathroom when they're having get togethers and whatnot but I really kind of wanted the pieces to pop out to be their travel photos their seashell uh, display the chalkboard wall mm-hmm. and really make those kind of the focal point I put a fun chandelier in here because I think it's kind of a fun idea to put a chandelier in a bathroom oh it's great yeah. um, and it really kind of adds to the you know she said I want to be having a relaxing space in here I want it to be a place I can go and just kind of chill out as well mm-hmm. and escape everything thing so that's kind of the idea I went with on uh, on my bathroom uh, design and they already had the dark kind of charcoal mm-hmm. colored trim and she said that she liked that as well yeah. I like how you went white on the walls but you did that charcoal color on the wainscoting of the beadboard yeah. and the cabinet I like how it ties the whole room together and I would think some of the photos in in the picture frames could be more brighter and more poppy uh, that's just what I could find here for the graphic illustration of it but um, I really think that would be a neat thing mm-hmm. it's almost like the this is us bathroom. So when you're in there doing your thing, you're like, oh, that looks like it was a fun trip. <laughs> this is us I think bathroom. we're out of uh, toilet paper. Oh, I didn't even think of this is us. I wasn't me. I've never seen the show, so I'm not making a reference to anyone dying sure. after a fire or anything. How do you even know that? We don't watch that show. Because I clicked on something this week and it said uh, the shocking reason why some character died on this is us. You've been secretly watching this is us. And uh, Golden Girls and... um, Okay, we'll talk about that later. Let's show my bathroom. Okay. Your bathroom is this. I went with more of a lighter color palette. I did the light gray on the walls with the white wainscoting. And I know that they'd been committed to this color when they moved in. And it was just too much. So... I thought, let's add the pops of color in things that are easily changeable. So if they do get tired of this color, they can move on to the next color palette. But everything in the room that stays, stays fairly neutral. So it's a good blank canvas to work with. Mm-hmm. I like your your colors that you put in there. I like the... Um 
the shower curtain and, and all that. The shower curtain's kind of a deep teal, and then there's some fun cactus prints um, on kind of a gallery wall. And then I added some open shelving for baskets, and uh, the towels I went with kind of a fun green color. I don't know if you get to see the rug at all, but the rug, I actually found the exact one that we put in our hallway. Oh. And it's got every color you can imagine in it, and mm-hmm. it's kind of a neat, funky tribal print, so I just love it. Uh, and I thought, you know, it's hard to find a room where this wouldn't add some color and some interest and kind of work with any colors that you wanted to work with. I thought the rug kind of seemed familiar. Yeah. It's, when I, like, you walk on it every day. Like, I think we have that rug. Mm-hmm. Was that in the program? Was that in one yeah, of the things? Yeah, it's, it's in one of the folders. There one you of the, go. One of the vendors, we can pull their things. There you go. Mm-hmm. Huh. I found, uh, actually, I was looking at the program today uh, that we use to render this stuff, and one of the vendors in there uh, is actually, uh, it, it, I went to school with her, her, her parents owned the company. Okay. Um, but I went to school with them, uh, a stone company from my hometown. A stone company? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, I was like, I know that name, and I know, I think they, that her parents did a stone, had a stone company. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's them. That's so she funny. actually did the first uh, radio commercial I ever did. We did it together. We were the the spokeschildren for uh, the, the, the Piggly, Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly. Yeah, and um, yeah. Okay. There you go. I just thought it was kind of funny. I'm like, huh? Small world. <laughs> yeah. Like I I didn't know if there was another one of those companies with that same name or what. But uh, so there you go. There's the bathroom redesign. Yes. Sent it in through the Facebook page, and we came up with a design for it this week. So it's that easy. If you have a de- uh, space or a place you want uh, some de- design advice for, just send it in to us through the website, confusedroom.com, or send it in through our Facebook page. We appreciate that because we like doing this. It is. It's a good thing. So go ahead and send those in. Uh, next space to move along to, let's say, uh, dining. And you did the dining. I room. did dining, yes. And this is the before picture I have of the dining space. It's kind of just a, you know, it, it, a nice hardwood floors. I like that. Uh, it looks like they are real, so they probably can be refinished if you need to, to do a bit of a different color if you want. Sure. Um, not, not, I mean, nice natural light coming in there. I do love the little, um, what do you call the thing uh, above the uh, the window, the the blue? The valance. The valance. Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? No. I love the valance. So I'm, I incorporated that into my design. In fact, I put valances actually over the doorways as well. Okay, so no. you get stuck <laughs> on the squirrel items in the room, like the blue valance and the <laughs> tiny rug. But I notice things like this is an older home because mm-hmm. of some of the moldings that are used. But also look at how the ceiling is. It's a cove that mm-hmm. goes up. There's a very thin rail around the top where a crown would be yeah but then from the top of that it it you know mm-hmm. it's like a plaster cove that yeah. goes up to the ceiling those are the things i notice it's real it, it's cool it gives you a lot to work with yeah so i uh i came up with it's a fairly simplistic design they want to kind of do some more of an elegant uh feel to their uh their dining space uh, so here's what I did. I, I did cover up the uh, the openings and I put actual doors on them okay. just to kind of make it its own room, its own space. You can mm-hmm. shut the doors. You can have your formal uh, dinner party in there uh, if you want. Uh, and then I uh, changed the dining table up from a rectangle to a circle. And it's kind of a rustic wood, but more of a formal chair to go with it. Okay. Um, uh, real pretty, you know, wooden chandelier hanging down uh, with some Edison type bulbs in it. Uh Chan- or a, a clock on the back wall that uh, is kind of fun black metal big piece. It almost kind of has a New Englandy feel to it. Cape Cod. Cape Cod, mm-hmm. New England feel. Um, and then for an accent wall in this, I did uh, that wallpaper. The the old Damask. The old flocked Damask flocked wallpaper, wallpaper, black and white, uh, above uh, some of the wainscoting. So we kind of have that. Um, sea blue-ish how would you describe the blue in this this is like a slate blue slate blue with the black damask for the accent wall a white bookshelf 
And then on the very back end of the wall, uh, right below the clock, uh, we have uh, just a, a big old wooden uh, you know, bookcase, shelf, workspace, kind of a, almost a buffet, if you will. Buffet or hutch. Yeah. yeah. That could be used for uh, whatever you have going on. People in there, whether you have a, a party, a little, you know, literally want to do a buffet with some food and everybody kind of stay entertained and just uh, help themselves can be used for, you know, multi, multi things. I like it. So that would be my take on it. I, I know you didn't have a, t- a chance to uh, to work on this room. No. But what would you have done given the chance? I liked how you added sconces to the wall because I think that really is a good tie-in with the age of the home. Mm-hmm. And I would have probably added sconces as well. Mm-hmm. I think I would have still stuck, though, with a longer table and really utilized the fact that this could seat quite a few people so why not go ahead and, and accommodate that mm-hmm. um right now there's like a love seat in there and some odds and end furniture i think i would keep it just strictly dining and maybe have done a long built-in buffet along the the far wall so that you had a place to serve people and, mm-hmm. and have everything right there very handy i liked your blue color that was great um i don't know what color i probably would have gone with but mm-hmm. it was probably Blue is my favorite, so probably something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would have tried to have kept it somewhat, I think, true to the, the age of the home and, and tried and to inc- incorporate some of those details that maybe made it feel older rather than sure. let's just take an old house and make it new. Sure. And with the floors, one of the other reasons that I put um, doors on on the, the door frames that are here uh, to separate the room out is because I did, in fact, change the floor color up to be a bit more uh, rustic uh, in nature. Okay. Um, and I, because I, the floors do carry to other parts of the home, mm-hmm. but I figure if you put the doors in there, it does kind of separate it out. So it does allow you, if you're just going to change one part of the house floor color, you can do that without it being very awkward where it's like, why does the floor suddenly change right here? Mm-hmm. Does that seem, does that make more sense when you have doors in, in spaces? I understand that. I'm not a big fan of refinishing wood floors in mm-hmm. one room to be different than another room. Okay. I, I don't, I don't think I would do that in in my plans mm-hmm. or anything but I understand not knowing if in this particular case if they were going to carry it on at mm-hmm. the same time yeah then it could be done and still mm-hmm. keep it uh keep it to its uh, its own space yeah so there you go that's my dining space and I put a pretty vase with flowers in the middle of the table <laughs> that's good. isn't that beautiful uh-huh. there you go uh let's move on to your space and uh I call it the purple monstrosity it's the purple people eater it is and it everything in this room either is purple or has a purple tint to it because of all the purple on the walls. Mm-hmm. The walls are just a really, really bright, like, I don't even know what team color that would be. Purple rain. <laughs> I don't know. And then the bedspread's purple, and the furniture is really a dark, dark brown. But with all the purple reflecting around the room, it kind of takes on a purple tint as well. The only thing that's not purple is... The ceiling and the carpet. The carpet's just your, you know, tan, regular old carpet. It's not special in any way. So I'd have no problem taking it out, which I did in my design. I was expecting to see a giant Prince poster in here or something of that, <laughs> of that nature. But uh, yeah. that really wasn't part of it. Shall we show your design of the, uh, the and, room? And we should say what they were going for. They okay. were wanting more of a... I guess a relaxing retreat is how mm-hmm. you would word it. Yeah. Yeah. You just don't get that with purple. I think purple is supposed to be romantic and somewhat calming, but this is little girl room purple. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So here's your take to make it relaxing and calming. Yeah. And what I did on the walls, this color is called white blue. It's a Benjamin Moore color, and I love it because in certain lights it looks blue, certain lights it looks more green. And it's one of those colors that seems to actually kind of change during the day with the exposure of light. Um, Left the window pretty much, well, I put white panels on it because you do want some privacy, but I didn't put any kind of window covering that's going to really draw attention to the window. Mm -hmm. It's just more to kind of add that, you know, calm, not loud feel to the room. Went with a hardwood in there. 
And the reason I did that is because we are allergy people. So I think Mm -hmm. of allergy people and I wonder, you know, if the carpet's not in there, maybe you'll sleep better. I put a jute rug in there, which is easier to keep clean and it doesn't absorb quite so much. And that helps with some of the sound, but went with simple white bedding, um, some kind of nature themed artwork over the bed. I added mirrors and lamps to nightstands. In the original picture, the bed's pushed up in the corner, and I centered it more in the room, and I added a fun chandelier. Now, the the mirrors behind the lamps, there's a reason for that. It reflects more light into the room. Mm-hmm. And it kind of balances everything, too. I mean, it as does. far as just the feel. Yeah. I, I remember when, when you started doing that, I'm like, I like that. And it's just, it's one of those things just like, why, why weren't we doing that forever? Or why wasn't, why did that never come to my mind even before sure. I met you? Uh, but that really, it's a trick that, you know, some people it's second nature. Some it's like, ah, it's like epiphany. Like why this is great. It can take, you know, your little lamps and, and double the amount of light. And it, it kind of gives a nice glow back into the room. Mm-hmm. It really does. Now, the pillows that you put on here, are these pillows that came on the bed, or did you, like, add your own pillows to the program? All of the bedding, except for those three pillows, came on there. So you know me. I'm going to add pillows to anything that sits still. I know. You could add pillows like that. It takes work. I'll show you later. Do you, like, have to angle them? Like, You have to sit them them just right and pick out what pattern each one is and what size and set them exactly just like you're setting an object on the table in the program. You have to set the pillow just so. And not so far back that it gets buried in the other pillows because that'll happen too. Sure, sure. That's some pillow dedication. It's just like 10 minutes of pillow. No, it's not (laughs) that bad now. It was that bad on the first thing. But when I did the basement room, I uh, had extra pillows on the couch. Mm -hmm. I I put pillows on everything. And she does in real life too. I do. I'm kind of a pillow hoarder. And I have allergies. I don't know why I do that, but I love pillows. We've lost pets with in piles of pillows here. It's no, like, where did, we have not. Where did Scruffy go? We have not. Uh, Stacy says, ooh, I love that, Jenny. You have such a great eye. Kind of a beach house cottage feel. Thank you. Yes. It is kind of, yeah. It's kind of, to me, that's relaxing. So mm-hmm. that's what I went with. I could see this dining room and uh, your, uh, your bedroom being in the same house together. I could see that. And it's funny because you designed one and I did... I designed the other, but mm-hmm. we can kind of make our, our pattern or our uh, styles mesh. Yeah, I mean, it, we kind of have that happen naturally as it is. Half the time when we're in the store, it's, it's kind of funny where it's like you'd be looking for something mm-hmm. and it's like, do you see that? Yeah, you don't have to even say what it was. <laughs> right. And it's just we know exactly what uh, what the other one is talking about. Especially when we're out junking and we see mm-hmm. something. Yes, that does happen quite often. Um, so there you go. Those are our uh, designs for the week. And like I said, if you have a uh, space, a room you want some uh, advice on, uh, we do it for free. So uh, send it in through our website at confusedroom.com or just send it directly through our Facebook page. I check that as well. And we may use it on uh, next week's episode of the program. The sooner you get it to us, the better, because it takes a little bit of time to do some of these. It so, does. It uh, does. if you can get it to us uh, earlier in the week, that's your uh, better odds for it being on the uh, the following week's program. What uh, what sort of projects uh, are are on the uh, the docket for the coming weeks on on the program uh, of stuff that that you're working on? Like physically working on. Like physically, where we're going to have uh, like the pantry. Okay. Um, tomorrow I'm starting on a fireplace and I'm, the first step is to paint the walls surrounding it. Cause I don't want to cut in around all the little stones with mm-hmm. painting. So I'm going to paint first and then touch up afterwards. Mm-hmm. So you'll come home and we may have blue up on the walls tomorrow. Maybe. Okay. Excited about that. It'll be interesting. Yeah. I got to get my before pictures though. First. Well, you better do that. So make sure I, I'm able to do I'm that. Because I'm horrible about that. I will just jump right in. I'm so gung-ho to do it, and I just forget all about the before pictures. Yeah, there, there's several where it's like, uh, I can get my before picture of this, but now the wall behind it has like a weird paint job on it that's not I part know, of the picture. I know. And like our before <laughs> picture of our pantry had sheetrock missing because sure. we started electrical before we took before. Sure. And then um, beyond that, we have kitchen, which is huge, which mm-hmm. you're excited about. Yeah, I'm not as excited to do that one because that's going to be a big job. 
Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'm really excited about the laundry room. I'm, I'm taking that as mine and that is going to be, cause I'm the one who's doing everybody's laundry. So I'm going to make it the way I want it to be. And it's going to be pretty. It's going to be really pretty, Tony. <laughs> You're, you'll see. You'll see. Shut up. Stop making fun of me. It's good. I'm like, I'm, I'm just sitting here. I'm just, I'm You're not looking saying anything. at me. That, you're giving me that whatever, Jenny. <laughs> you're just like, no, it's going to be. It is. I'm like, I, I believe you. I'm, I'm not, I'm not arguing. How are you going to make it pretty? Uh, doilies? Lots of doilies? No, no. Actually, I'm going to go more modern with mm-hmm. it, but I'm using navy on the cabinets and I'm doing a fun stripe paint wall treatment that will be an unexpected color is what i'll say are you are you like inventing a new color like crayola did when we were kids where they're like yeah. seven never before seen colors no no it's not it's not a new color but it's one i have not used in any of the designs that anybody has seen yet interesting it, it will look i'm excited amazing i've already cool. done the design so yeah. i'm Super confident on it. Okay, cool. I think I've seen part of it. You probably Didn't have. Didn't you show it to me? Yeah. Once? And I showed you the tile selection for the yeah, floor. It looks good. Yeah, I'm excited about that. We looked at some of those. Mm-hmm. All right, so those are some of the upcoming projects. And then whatever you guys send us. So be sure to send it at uh, confusedroom.com or through our Facebook page. Jenny would never do doilies. Says no, Stacey. I would never do doilies. Until Thank they you. come back in. <laughs> Just no. wait. They'll be like, people will be framing them and putting them on walls. And no. It'll be wonderful. That wraps up today's episode of Confused Room. Thank you guys for watching. Send your stuff in and uh, hopefully we can use it on uh, our next episode of the program next uh, Thursday night, 8 o'clock Central. Same place right here on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> until then, uh, thank you guys for watching. Thanks for listening to the podcast. Press subscribe. Whatever platform it is you are listening to us on, leave some positive reviews. That greatly helps our show grow. All right. Until next time, for Jenny, I'm Tony. Thank you for watching another episode (laughs) of Confused Room. Bye.